Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you for joining our virtual Congress of K Cases. My name is Kyung Yun Ho from Sunchanyang University Hospital in Seoul, Korea. And I am president of Korean Society of Endoscopic and uh, Laparoscopic Surgeon. I'm going to share this session, uh, special lecture one. First, I'd like to introduce our speaker. Dr. Nathan is a clinical professor at the uh, Department of Surgery, University at Buffalo. And now he is the president of the International Federation of uh, Society of Endoscopic Surgeons. And uh, Dr. Nathan, Nathan has uh, ex extensive experience uh, with the minimal invasive and the bariatric surgical procedure. And he is an active member of various society and uh, former uh, president. Last night, I prepared his CV. I wonder if I finish the presentation of him within time. Anyway, I think he is the most famous doctor I ever met. There is need to summarize. He is founder of many surgical society, excellent educator, finally, he received more than 22 awards, both nationally and internationally. And he's a writer also. Okay. Okay. Finally, he lives in South Florida and he has three children. Uh, let's hear his uh, nice lecture, le lecture. Let's enjoy it, please. Please, Nathan. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's a pity that I cannot be there with you guys. I love your country, your cities. I wish I'd be there. And hopefully we can see each other next year. Uh, I hope everybody is staying healthy. Uh, I want to thank you for the invitation to this meeting that I consider one of the best I ever attend. I'd like to visit you there. I, it's an honor for me to be invited. Uh, and I be, uh, I've been asked to discuss new technologies for bariatric and metabolic interventions. This is my disclosure. My name is Nathan Sundell. I have interest in some companies, so here they are. Uh, my presentation won't have any, any problems with these companies, but it's up to you to judge. So what, what is the problem? One of the biggest problems that we have is that uh, obesity is everywhere. Not in one country, not in two countries, not in the Western societies. Obesity is everywhere. And the implication that obesity has in people, in cost, in public health is, is a big toll. So that's what is important. And also, we know that the same operation that we've been doing for those many, many years only cover one, 1.5% 1 of our population. For many reasons. Some people consider this extreme, some don't have access. There are many reasons insurance don't cover, government don't pay for it. But you need to understand that we have operation for with more than 30 years and people are not coming to have the surgery all the time. Why? Because the technology we have today is look like this compared with what is going to happen and what is happening in the world, in other places, in other uh, uh, professions. So we need to advance our own. Yes, we are very good in doing things with what we have. But the patient understands that better things are coming, less invasive, more safe, even with similar or better results. So that's what we need to promote. When I see this, I have two things that are important for me. First one is this one. The first one is that it's not fake, that we are not faking it. Second one, is that we are not trying to do exactly the same every time. Because we ended up coming back to what we did at the beginning. It's not that we're gonna do the same biliopancreatic digestion, the same godino jejunal ileal bypass. So that's, that's something we need to understand that is different. From, from the point of view of surgery, <clears throat> we've been changing a little bit what we call the body clip. This is a clip that is gonna place in the same place that you usually uh, do the sleeve, as you can see here. 
you see the clip place. It has an opening below where you can do endoscopy and the fluid on the stomach are gonna evacuate here. You don't cut, you don't staple, you don't do many other things. You don't need maintenance here. Then we go by laparoscopy. We do a very small incision in the angle of his, where we're gonna bring a gold finger or a small retractor. Then we're gonna pass the clip from below, as you're gonna see here. And this clip is gonna go under the stomach in the posterior wall, and we're gonna bring it up superiorly, as you can see here. Then we're gonna bring it up here, and then we're gonna connect them. And then the last time thing that we have to do after we close it there, the last thing we have to do is uh, fixing it. We need to make sure that we're fixing it there. So we have two or three posterior stitches that you can do with the end of stitch of regular suture. As you can see here, there is a bougie inside that you're gonna see later. Then we go anteriorly and we do the same. We put two or three stitches. Now you see the bougies in place. It's a bougie number 36. And it's more to prevent that the clips go close to the greater curvature, as you can see here. So we can put the stitches here. Then we finally are gonna close the clip. And the last thing we do is remove the bougie and check with the scope. As I mentioned before, the, with the scope, you can go inside. Then you can go posteriorly and that's how you finish there. But at the end, even with these new devices and technology, endoscopy will be the logical progression for this treatment. Why? Because in orthopedics, we move from exercise, physical therapy, medications, to joint replacement. Then we ended up having arthroscopy. In cardiology, for example, we move from exercise, diet, and medications to coronary bypass. In the middle, we have angioplasties. Obesity is the same. We cannot move from exercise, diet, and medications to surgical procedures. There should be something here, mid-level. And that's where endoscopy plays a role. So the surgery of the future, probably for metabolic and bariatric intervention, will this one. We like to divide the procedures in interventions on the stomach and interventions on the small bowel. And we learn, and this is how we discuss it in the American Society of Gastroenterology, in the American Endoscopic Bariatric Society, that the stomach is more related to weight loss, more related to obesity. But the small bowel intervention are much more related to diabetes and metabolic disease. And that's what we're gonna review. The easy one from the stomach, it will be the liquid fillet intragastric balloons. As you know, uh, some of them we keep doing, some of them we don't do anymore. Uh, and uh, why? Because even that is the classic 600 cc's, you put it, you leave it six months. Now you can live in some places for a year. Uh, it worked in our own experience very well for obese patients and for very, very obese, what we might them to lose weight. So in some places it's used more like a cosmetic or for the uh, overweight and obese. This worked very well. And we published this in 2017 when we showed that the volumes, the, how the patient tolerate the procedure, adverse events, it's not gonna change much with more feelings, more fluid, or more time. More time helps a little bit, the other one doesn't change anything at the end. This may change a little bit because this is the swallowable balloon. With the swallowable balloon, what you have is you have two types. One, it's connected like you see here with a the catheter. Then you swallow it through fluoroscopy, you inflate it. And then you can put one, two, three, as you can see in the images below. But there are some other ones that you swallow it without catheter, with the liquids in the stomach or with some waters, it's gonna inflate by itself. And after two, three months, it's gonna absorb by itself. That will make it be more available, more easy to handle, and that even that the resulting weight loss won't be the same, it will be more acceptable for the patient's well-being. You also probably hear about this one, this is called Aspire. This you put a peg, so a percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy, that it will be connected to this valve. 
And this valve you can open and close, as you see in these figures. And then how this works, 30 minutes after the patient eats, he connects to this pump and he put fluid inside. When you put that fluid inside, it blends the food and then you connect it to this pump again and then you remove it. It's what I call a control bulimia through a gastrostomy. It has, the people who doesn't like it say the problem is the concept creating bulimia. The people who like it said the patient learn to chew better because if they chew better, then the food will be much easier to digest. And they think the patients are happy. And the results are not that bad. The results are that after 12 months, as you can see here, close to 50% of excessive weight loss, or the weight loss in kilogram after a year, close to 20 kilograms. So the results are not bad. The concept is where people have the problem. What about the suturing gastroplasty? The suturing gastroplasty is the one who having more adepts now. As you know, you use a suturing device that was huge at the beginning. You need two people to work it out. As you can see in the images, now it's smaller, much easier to use. The stitches are very good. And believe me, I use it for other things. I close through the colonoscopy, colonic vaginal fistulas, colo vesical fistulas, and also perforated ulcers. Uh, and as you can see here, it's very safe. You use a device that looks like a core that you bring the tissue to your, to your jaws, then you pass the needle from one side to the other one, and then you have the stitch. <clears throat> the stitch, after you place the stitch and you do a uh, continuous surgery, you can anchor it with some plastic anchors. And that's one of the things that people also see as can be a problem, but I don't think it's a problem. Here in some studies that the, uh, we have, you see that the volume of the stomach that is measured here is gonna be converted to something similar to the image you see on pink. And this is how ended up when you study volumetries. You leave a little bit of the fundus, but you create a mid body and, and most of the body restriction like an accordion suture. We presented our first experience internationally in Sages a, a while ago and the results were pretty good to us. <clears throat> and then later we presented in 2017, how we moved from the first suturings to a different patterns of suture, how we move from the fair procedure to the new ones. And most importantly, how we discovered that if we create this type of suture, you collapse like an accordion, the whole greater curvature with that causing a very significant restriction and that will help us with the total weight loss that you see here. This is total weight loss, 17 and 16%. That is a very, very good number. And in the paper you see per protocol, we get 84% of the patients with that. Why? Because if you leave a little bit of fundus, this is a good paper from Abu Dhabi that presented in Ipsos and then published. How do you see the patient with that gastroplasty this is the percentage of gastric food inside the stomach. It's very naughty. But after the gastroplasty, three months after, stays, the food stays up to 240 minutes. Look at this, after uh, uh, three months. So then you understand what the patient feels full and the emptying is decreasing and that helps a lot. The second question was, can we standardize the procedure? Can we standardize a procedure? Yes, we can. So now this is procedures that we are performing all over the world, States, India, Brazil, Mexico, Spain, and you can see they all look very, very similar. So we've been able to standardize much, much better the procedure and that will help us do it better in the future. Now for the last year and a half, a project that is gonna uh, last at least two, two and a half years, it depends the virus, is a multi-center endoscopic pseudo gastroplasty tri called the Mary tri. Uh, Manuel is proctoring the guys. I'm the director of the trial, and there are the two PIs, Abu J and Eric Wilson. And look at the places who accepted and wanted to be part, Mayo Clinic, Cornell, Brigham and Women's in Boston, John Hopkins, 
etc. So this is going to create a very, very good start. And we are already in the cross part where the people who didn't get it at the beginning and get it now. And let's see how we can have. The other question I get very often, after you do the sleeve, can you make a surgery? Can you revise to a sleeve, to a bypass? Yes, we've done that in few cases. And look how the image look after a gastroplasty inside the abdomen of a patient in laparoscopy. How the endoscopy look in those patients? And as you can see, one of the things that happen is after a year and a half, two years, some of the sutures start to get loose. Some breaches stay, but some of the sutures get loose, so we lose the restriction. So you have two options. Either we resuture, that we've done that in some patients, or some patient was to convert to sleeve. So we go back, and the only thing that I change is I don't calibrate with the bougie. I keep my endoscope inside, and then as long as I can see, I am close to the lesser curvature, far away from those plastic anchors, I'm safe and we've done it without a problem. Other suturing procedure is like here being performed by Dr. Gortran Lopez from Spain. It's called POSI. The difference is they go only to the fundus. This went to the FDA trials. They didn't achieve the expected results. So they move now to a device that they can do the fundus and some of the body. So now they are running in the US new study for POSE 2, and we wait in the results. We have other suturing devices that I think are important to have. You have this uh, device that is supposed to be much, much easier to suture, as you can see here. Flexible, cheaper, easy to use. When the suture is already prefixed, you aspirate, suck, and then you put the stitch, and then you can do whatever procedure you want with the suturing device. This is an easy suturing device, not necessarily a best procedure. They present uh, the first uh, results up to six months, and you can see the excessive weight loss 41%, the total body weight loss 11%, so it's not, it's not that bad, and uh, we're waiting for the next results, okay? The other suturing device that I've seen that is, this is much more specific for bariatrics, is that you put already this hole, like a uh, scalators going down circle where the suture you're gonna pause, you suck the stomach, and then you're already with one long suture, you're already getting the whole stomach, very quick, very relatively easy to use. And there are studies in Spain, they were gonna present in IFSO this year, some of the first results, as you know, it's postponed to next year. So we're waiting for the result from, from the group but it's a very interesting device. Now let's move something that is maybe more interesting for a country like Korea, where you need more, more metabolic intervention than bariatrics. Then we have the intervention in the bowel, that there are much more for metabolic syndrome, diabetes, etc. We learn from surgery that there is a proliferation of the mucosa in the duodenum by exposure, a large exposure to sugar. That's what it causes insulin resistance. So we learn also from the bypasses and from some of the works with barriers that if food doesn't get in contact with that portion, the diabetes is controlled much, much easier. So we had at that time a, the endobarrier that was like a big tube that you anchor in the pylorus and then you prevent food to touch the duodenum and while it lasts, the result for diabetes was amazing. But as you can see here for this fixation, they have some ulceration, hepatic abscesses. So they canceled the FDA trials in the US, but they approved a new trial with different uh, fixation. Some other groups are working in the same, as you can see here in the Asian Institute. Dr. Kalpala is working in a device that is a little bit similar but the fixation is much easier according to the group. And then you have the same tube that will prevent the contact there. But people move to a different time. This company moved to something that they call duodenal mucosal resurfacing. What they do is they, this is how the mucosa of the duodenum look first, then 
you lift the du duodenal mucosa, then you ablate it with boiling water, and then it necros, and then the velocity, the duodenal mucosa start to grow again. This is some of the first studies in Brazil, as you can see. You have a normal mucosa, then you lift, and now you're gonna use boiled water to burn it, as you can see here. You control by fluoroscopy, this is the image. After you bail the mucosa, it's gonna necrose, it's gonna disappear. And then you can control it later, two, three months later, and see one year how it looks. You have the mucosa, but while the mucosa is excluded or burned, you have almost 100% of control of glycemia, but the mucosa is gonna come back. And there is the evidence, as you can see here, that it's come back. And look at the result in hemoglobin A1C, 12 weeks from 8.5 to seven, and then after that, we have even below seven. But more important, look at this. They measured the uh, hepatic function test, and they moved from a high uh, fatty liver to a less fatty liver. And this is demonstrated by the MRI. The more yellow you see, the more fat. Look how this liver is very fat and there is fat everywhere. After only two weeks with this procedure, you see the liver is getting the normal color in MRI and the fat is starting to reduce. That is a very good indication of hepatic fat content. But you are concerned that you need to boil all the time. No, you have other possibilities to do it. There's some group I started to do in laser. With laser, then you can do duodenal mucosal resurfacing. The good thing is you can ablate your target. You can create a circle around the papilla so the laser is not going to the papilla. This is how like you shoot people from a plane to the ground with point laser, laser pointer. This is the same, you target only the submucosa. This was presented in New York by a group from Israel. And of course, the results at six months were as not as good one as the other one, but they are good. And the reason is because you are targeted only the submucosa. The good thing is you can keep targeting more often because you are not removing the whole mucosa. But imagine you can do that with a pill. This is Lucy. Lucy is a pill that they have been studying in Harvard in Boston. You take that pill, it creates a coating in this bowel that's going to last for a certain period of time. While the coating is there, there is no contact of food. So imagine you change your metmorphine, your diabetic medication for Lucy, that is luminal coating, and then you don't need to take diabetes medication. In the US, we approved last year glycine, that it does the same. What it does is, well, as soon as you take it before eating, it mixes with the mucin and it forms a very layer. And then uh, you see that it stays for there. It doesn't absorb and it, it will help prevent the contact of food with the mucosa. The other play that we have a big risk is, is you notice here from the American Society of Bariatric and Metabolic Surgery, the number that increases more for us is revisions. And the most difficult revision is always the bypass. So how are we gonna bypass the bypass? You have the bypass here. Some people say the problem is in the anastomosis that increase in size, that the pouch grows. If you can increase more, surgeons have the tendency to treat every regain of weight with another surgery, every complication with another surgery. I have the tendency to do the opposite. I have the tendency to do it by endoscopy. And I think it will be more smart, it will be more cost effective if it works. So, for example, you have a big anastomosis, big groups are doing now argon beam coagulator to reduce the size of the anastomosis. Biggest experience just published from the group in Brazil and the results are pretty good. But also if you have these suturing devices, as I mentioned before, you can reduce the size of that anastomosis with a couple of stitches and then 30 minutes later, 25 minutes later, with a very less invasive surgery, the patient go home, and then you can stop preventing the weight regain and causing some weight loss. As you can see here, big anastomosis, big pouches, you can reduce them. And this is a publication we did also in 2007. We collect the publication of 
big groups, and those big groups, uh, we, lo we were able to achieve full thickness suturing, we stopped the weight regain, and we were able to lose more weight. What if we can do all together? We can reshape the pouch, we can narrow the anastomosis, and we get a bypass inside the bypass. So there are a couple of groups that are working in something that looks like a stent with a tube. So similar, like mixing the, what you saw before, but this is a specific for bypass. So what it has is you see in the anchor, you can see there is a big opening, then it will stay in the big anastomosis, but then there is a very small calibrated anastomosis of 1.3, 1.2. So it doesn't matter, the big one is so it doesn't go through, the small one, you can control the amount. And also for metabolic effects, you add the liner 60 centimeters in length. And this is what you ended up having. Your pouch reduced by suturing, your anastomosis reduced by suturing, and you add this, and then you will allow the patients to, to do better. Next one will be the magnets. This product is two octagonal magnets. One is gonna be placed by endoscopy, one is be placed by colonoscopy. One of the problems I have is colonoscopy. You can only go 80 centimeters above the ileocecal valve. So you are condemned to do a duodeno ileal bypass, like you see here. But it's very safe, it's very good. You couple the magnets, you do it by endoscopy and fluoroscopy. You make sure that the magnets are coupled. The patient go home. Four days later, it necrose. They create an opening. As you see here, day 12, you have an anastomosis that lasts six months, eight months. Uh, it's big for a gastric bypass, but it's a perfect size for another anastomosis. What I didn't like is the concept that I cannot decide where I can put my magnets. So a group now, is putting the magnets by endoscopy, go by laparoscopy, do a small incision in the intestines and connect them. But I thought, why don't we do something different? Why don't we put together these two ideas? Yes, we go by laparoscopy and we use the concept of this magnet that we use now for gallbladders, etc. So yes, we put the magnet by endoscopy, but by laparoscopy, I can use other magnets to position those magnets. And that's what I've been doing now in animals and in dry, as you can see here. We go by laparoscopy and the magnet that was put by endoscopy, I can mobilize in any way I want. And we, we're gonna start our first human patients uh, this year, but for the virus, we're gonna wait for next year, but we're gonna start our first human case. Lastly, I'm gonna do the endorobotics. Endorobotics, I think, you're gonna get a big, uh, uh, more than ro robotic for laparoscopy because you can have almost every movement with these robots. You can have fine instruments, you can suture, you can burn, you can cutter, you can cut. And that will allow us to work in very small spaces like the colon, like the esophagus, bigger like the stomach, small like the intestine. And that will help us do whatever we do by surgery we will be able to do by endoscopy. And as you can see here, there they don't triangulate exactly like surgery. This has been a complaint, but for me, that is not a complaint. We don't need the same triangulation. As soon as we can do fine movement, as soon as we can uh, do most of what we can do in surgery, we don't need to triangulate exactly like surgery. We can accommodate to our own triangulation. Look at this, for example, this is a colonic TME. You can go even the whole layers. You can create a hole as long as you'll be able to suture later, you know? Like you were gonna see here, you can remove, you send the specimen, even if you need to do the total resection, you can do it and then you can suture. And once you can suture, there is no problem anymore. And that's what we're gonna have, perforated duodenal ulcers. You can go by the scope. Colon perforations after colonoscopy, you can see to yourself. So that will help us a lot. The last uh, uh, 
conclusion that I have is this one. First one, primum non nocere, do not do harm. In my, I tell my residents, kill as few patients as possible. So we are not above the procedures. The procedures and the patients are more important than ourselves. Second, so always in Spanish, it say, shit, I am Batman. So this little dog think he's Batman. Some endoscopists think that our procedure are like Superman. We are not. It's less invasive, can be safer. We are not reaching the same results of surgery today, but we're gonna do it. And that's what we need to understand the difference today and work on it. The last question that I got very often, and it's my last one, who's gonna be doing this? Bariatric surgeons or gastroenterologists? This is my answer today. I hope you've seen the video as I see in it. This is the little boy, very good in uh, using this horse, very skilled. And then you have these adults that doesn't have a clue how to do a horse. So the answer is whoever does it better, surgeon or gastroenterologist. Again, it's been an honor for me to be here. I want to thank you guys, the organizers, the society, because always invite me, you're very nice to me. And be safe, stay healthy, and I hope we can all see each other soon. Thank you very much. For me to be here, I want to thank you guys, the organizers, the society, because always invite me, you're very nice to me. And be safe, stay healthy, and I hope we can all Okay. Thank you very much for your nice presentation. It's, uh, it's amazing. And the surprise with the, the new instrument of uh, you, you show us. And uh, I, uh, I have a question about that. Uh, Thank you very much for your nice presentation. It's, uh, it's amazing. The surprise with the, the new instrument of uh, you, you show us. And, uh, I would like to ask you something about the uh, uh, durability. Uh, Thank you very much for your nice presentation. It's, uh, it's amazing. So, probably the, the new instrument of uh, you should ask. And uh, I would like to ask you something about the durability. Thank you very much for your nice presentation. It's, uh, it's amazing. So, probably. Can I can I say something? Can I ask ask can something? I okay, doctor. I have a question about uh, is uh, the durability, durability of uh, the the how long. Can, will I, it, can I say something? Will it take, can I will it take ask, to can I maintain its function uh, and uh, about I the tensile strength of the, of the, the instrument? Durability. Durability of the, uh, how long? Can I, can I say something? Will it take, can I will it take to maintain its function? And, uh, Maybe you can you can write the questions there. I think you have the two programs open. You need to close one. You need to close the the other platform. Uh, I saw a question here from from the audience asking, uh, duodenal mucosal abrasion, if there is any complication on biliary tract. So when you do the burning, you are away from the from the opening of the biliary tract. That is the papilla. But when you do laser, it's even better because with laser, you can create a circle around the papilla 
And it's like the drones when they shoot people. In that circle, the laser is not gonna go. So the laser will prevent you to injure the, the papilla. So the papilla, the, if you do that, you're prevented to that. With the burning, if your catheter is not well positioned, you can do that. So it's better to go away from that one or use the laser to prevent that lesion. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, for we have uh, some technical problem. <laughs> no, now you're good, now you're good, now you're good. <laughs> it's very sorry. And uh, okay, uh, mm, okay, it's time is, time, time is uh, getting very now, so we have, have to close this session. Problem. Thanks very much. Sir. No, 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 you're thank good. you very much for the invitation. I hope I see you soon. I love your country. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody.